Modern society has taught us all to believe that certain behaviors are normal. So for the most part, we act blindly without even a second glance. Although individuals are increasingly considering the economic and environmental costs of making decisions, it is disappointing that it is still the norm to consume animal products, buy products tested on animals, and wear leather clothing or boots. Join us in this video to discuss the inner workings of a cattle slaughterer factory, modern leather processing machines. Cattle raising is the art of raising cattle for various purposes, such as meat, milk, or draft animals. Cattle raising is a vital industry worldwide and has been a vital component of agriculture for thousands of years. At least 10,000 years ago, the first cattle were domesticated and they were raised as meat, beef and veal, dairy animals for milk and other dairy products, and draft animals, pulling carts, plows and the like. They are also raised to produce leather and their manure is used as a fertilizer. Cattle were the first livestock species to have a fully mapped genome, and there are currently about 1.3 billion cattle worldwide. Beef cattle are cattle that are raised for human consumption. The term beef, plural beeves, is still used to refer to an animal of either sex in the beef cattle industry in certain areas of the United States. Cows of particular breeds kept for the milk they receive are called dairy cows or milking cows. Most male offspring of dairy cows are sold for veal and may be referred to as veal calves. Real leather, not synthetically made, is made from animal skin and more commonly cowhide, although goat, buffalo, and exotic leathers such as snake and alligator are also available. Cow's leather is often referred to as a byproduct of the meat and dairy industries, accounting for just 5% of the animal's value. Before technological advances made raising large herds possible, early humans would use the hides from animals they hunted for meat. According to studies, 65% of leather comes from cows, 15% from sheep, 11% from pigs, and 9% from goats. Leather makes up less than 0.2% of all other animals. Nevertheless, some of the most unusual and unusual leathers are made from some of the more unusual and unusual hides, keeping this in mind. Cowhide is by far one of the most popular leathers today. Since it is a meat and dairy product, it is widely available worldwide, but it is also considered one of the most durable and desirable leathers. Cowhide is much heavier than other leathers, weighing between 1 and 12 ounces, making it a much better choice for jackets, coats, and furniture because it is more durable. Leather is a byproduct of the meatpacking industry. On many hides, especially full grain hides, you will see some small scars that the animal accumulates over time. Nevertheless, the high-end calfskin comes from real calves, aka baby cows. Veal meat is used to describe it. For their entire short life, they are chained to the ground and overfed with fatty foods. This allows the animal to be more tender and prevents it from scalding its skin, lowering the value of its hide. There are also slunk skins, which refer to stillborn slash miscarried slash aborted fetuses and are heavenly soft but also ridiculously expensive, and fallen skins that come from animals that die of natural causes but are virtually impossible to obtain. Even though cow leather is a byproduct, a great many other animals, pythons, alligators, lizards, stingrays, etc., are factory farmed solely for their skins, and a great many other animals are hunted, often by people who are not conservative or ignorant of conservation. After reviewing the breeds commonly used for leather production and the criteria for selecting animals for leather, there are standards to ensure the welfare of the animals when transporting them to the slaughterhouse. Therefore, what are the logistics of transporting cattle from the farm to processing facilities?
The transportation procedure is part of a sequence of steps required to transport the animal from the farm to slaughter, commonly referred to as pre-slaughter or anti-mortem handling. Pre-slaughter treatment can pose a challenge for animals and may lead to significant degradation of the final product without proper care. The need for transportation of food animals is most prevalent in commercial agriculture, but to a lesser degree in the rural or subsistence sector. These animals must be relocated for a variety of reasons, including marketing, slaughter, restocking, from drought zones to better grazing and change of ownership. Animals are typically moved by hoof, by road motor vehicle, by rail, on board, or by sea. The bulk of livestock in developing countries is mainly transported by foot, by sea, and rail. Historically, livestock has been transported by foot, but livestock transportation by road and rail vehicles has surpassed this with increasing urbanization of the population and commercialization of animal production. Animal transport is unquestionably the most stressful and traumatic stage in the chain of operations between farm and slaughterhouse, and it contributes greatly to poor animal welfare and animal loss. Before transport, animals should be housed in appropriate conditions with easy access to potable water and protection from the elements. Well-planned and carefully maintained facilities are essential to facilitate mobility and prevent animal and stock handlers injuries. Since transport is a stressful process for animals, transport times and journey lengths should be kept to a minimum and meat animals should be slaughtered as close to where they were sourced as possible. Animals should be hydrated and hydrated at regular intervals throughout the journey, as well as, if necessary, fed. There are no specific journey times for each species that are suitable. However, rest and water stops should be allowed at least every nine hours. For young animals, this period may need to be extended. Animals should be fed appropriate and sufficient food at least twice a day, with enough time to digest it before the journey is completed. Animals that are particularly vulnerable to heat stress, such as pigs, should be transported at night or in the cooler parts of the day in very hot conditions. <laughs> To avoid being thrown around on winding or poorly surfaced roads, vehicles must be driven carefully, anticipating dangers and with gentle braking and acceleration, particularly on winding or poorly surfaced roads. Many of the cows that have died before they reach the slaughterhouse are too sick or injured to walk. These cows, often called downers in the meat and dairy industry, have ropes or chains attached to their legs to prevent them from being hauled off the trucks. Many of the animals that arrive at the slaughterhouse healthy enough to walk are afraid and don't want to leave the truck, so they are thrown into the truck with electric prods or chains. Cows are then forced through a chute and shot in the head with a captive bolt rifle designed to stun them. However, due to the rapid pace of the assembly line and the lack of preparation for many workers, this method often falls short of rendering the animals insensible to pain. After exploring the cattle's journey from the farm to the facility, it's important to delve into the slaughterhouse experience. How are the processing lines structured for separating hides from meat? Cattle are herded off the cattle liners and through a race or chute to be weighed before being placed into holding pens. These pens, typically holding 20 to 50 cattle, are designed to separate various grades and coat colors of cattle that must be slaughtered. Uh, so many times we talk about the quality of the meat. This separation allows workers in the slaughter plant to assess the different carcasses. Licensed veterinarians also use these pens for an anti-mortem before death examination, looking for signs of disease or abnormalities indicating illness. A metal ear tag is attached to facilitate a special post-mortem examination if any such issues are discovered. 
If conclusive evidence suggests that the animal is unsuitable for human consumption during the anti-mortem examination, it is condemned, and no post-mortem examination is necessary. The group ready for slaughter is then herded out of their holding pen into a race leading into the plant. This herding process is crucial to minimizing the impact on the meat's quality and ensuring that cattle are kept in a secure environment. Darker colored meat, known as dark cutters, is found in cattle experiencing fear or panic compared to those more alert and relaxed. Before reaching the kill floor, cattle are herded into a movable cradle or box chute. This cradle is designed to restrain the animal, preventing it from seeing what's happening outside the cage. The person above can then stun the animal, drop the side to free the stunned or killed animal, shackle one or both hind legs, and complete the rest of the slaughtering and dressing process. The box chute is open above with high sides preventing the animal from seeing over, even if it tries to raise its head. After the killing slash stunning process is complete, the right side of the box chute is released and let down to free the animal, allowing access to the legs for shackling. The box stall is equipped with a solid-sided gate at the rear to prevent cattle behind from seeing what is happening in front. This ensures they remain calm and peaceful. To induce instantaneous alertness, the captive bolt gun is the primary tool used for stunning and killing cattle. It uses a steel rod thrust into the animal's forehead, retracted and reset for the next animal by compressed air or a blank cartridge. Proper maintenance ensures the effectiveness of the captive bolt gun. Carbon dioxide is used to kill vegetable calves, and after rendering cattle senseless, they are released from restraint. The cradle's side panel drops down to allow access to the animal's legs. Chains shackled to hind legs are attached to a hook in the conveyor system, lifting the stunned bovine to the next stage, where it is bled out, skinned, gutted, and halved. Sticking and bleeding out involves using a sharp knife to cut the animal's throat, allowing blood to flow out. Depending on the slaughter plant's requirements, the cut can be made perpendicular or parallel to the neck. Bleeding out is done before dressing to prevent blood from coagulating and affecting meat quality. Skinning involves removing the hind shanks at the hocks, inserting beef hooks between the gam cord, and stripping the hide from the belly and sides using down pullers. This process enhances skinning effectiveness and yields head meat slash cheek meat. The head and limbs are removed after taking off the hide entirely. The head isn't detached until the legs, head, breast, and itch, rump, bones, are separated from the carcass. This is done using a handsaw or a saw similar to a chainsaw. Internal organs, except for the kidneys, are removed and the anus is cut off. The offal is then dumped into a cart or barrel for disposal or recycling. Many facilities recycle waste materials for various purposes. A post-mortem examination was carried out. At this stage in the slaughtering process, the carcass and viscera are examined by a federally licensed veterinarian who is employed by the FDA or CFIA. Since the head is cut from the neck, the brain and brain stem must also be examined for signs of BSE. Canada waiting on more information regarding a newly reported case of atypical BSE or mad cow disease in central Alberta. The brain, spinal column, eyes, and other organs in the United States and Canada most susceptible to BSE are discarded as SRMs or specified risk materials, SRMs. The first case of mad cow disease in the United States in six years. And never used in the food chain for livestock or humans. The carcass is split through the center of the backbone and the tail is removed. The spinal cord, classified as an SRM, is also removed during this procedure. The split carcasses are washed with cold water using a pressure washer and then dried. After slaughtering, the halves are moved to a cooler room, where they are stored at around 34 degrees Fahrenheit for a minimum of 24 hours. 
Carcasses are often left in the freezer for two to three weeks to allow the meat to cure before being cut up or ribbed into various beef cuts. Once the carcasses have been cured, butchering will commence. Having discussed the slaughtering process and the separation of hides and meat, what are the tanning processes and methods of transforming the hides into leather? After the hides have been removed from cows, they are taken to a factory tannery, where the process of turning them into usable heights begins. The first stage is the tanning process, which treats prepared hides or skins with chemicals to make them more durable and resistant to decay. There are many tanning methods in the leather production process, including vegetable tanning. To tan the hides, tannins extracted from tree bark or other plant materials are used. This process can take weeks or even months, resulting in leather that is rigid and has a natural earthy color. Chrome tanning, the most popular form, involves using chromium salts to tan the hides, a quicker process than vegetable tanning. Chrome tanning produces soft, supple leather with a wide variety of colors. Synthetic tanning, a relatively new technique gaining traction, involves using synthetic tanning agents due to its simplicity and effectiveness. The tanning process is divided into different parts. The first stage focuses on taking raw cow hides and processing them. Then, the skin is made by weight salting. After salting, there is no longer a risk of bacterial buildup, and the skin reacts better. The skin is now ready to be removed, with unwanted elements removed using hair rollers, giving it the appearance of real leather. Next is the sorting and cropping process, where raw hides are classified based on factors like weight and quality. Here, the leather is checked for the best quality and compliance with requirements. The tanning stage follows, focusing on turning prepared skins into usable patches. Opportunities in leather tanning value chain are diminishing as the business is facing challenges from several directions. Although there are many other tanning methods, this is the easiest and most time-saving production method. The hides are dipped repeatedly during the tanning process, acquiring a significant amount of moisture. The drawing and bringing process follows, requiring a general laminating machine to squeeze water out of the skin. The machine removes excess skin. Now that the skin is dry, it moves on to the next step of the separation process, considering its natural layers. Having discussed the different tanning methods and stages of transforming hides into leather, what are the current trends in leather goods and the global leather market? Wearing leather goods, especially a leather jacket with a designer label, will cost you more. However, if you opt for another designer creed, you can save money while still looking stylish in your unique way. Fashion is indeed dominated by runway trends, glamour and models but it is also determined by how you describe and present it to the world. When shopping for leather jackets, you want to focus on value for money jackets that enhance your appearance with refined design details. For completely custom made jackets, some businesses now allow their customers to choose their materials and designs. Leather jackets are available in various styles and are ideally suited to different occupations and lifestyles. It's made a fashion statement by being just the jacket for chilly winters. Leather bikers or motorcycle jackets are among the common leather jackets sold today, as well as exclusive leather gear for racers and motorists. Waterproof leather jackets are also becoming popular for areas with heavy snowfall and rain. Leather jackets are equally useful for those swanky fashion statements and utility. Leather has both function and style in it. It is used to shield against winter chills and other unpredictable weather bursts. It offers you comfort and warmth in a simple yet elegant style. Leather jackets have various materials, including buckskin, chamois, calfskin, goatskin, lizardskin, pigskin, ostrich suede, and cowhide.
leather fringed and fur trimmed leather jackets replaced traditional fashions, giving rugged leather a distinct look. This distressed leather with waxing and embossing looks like a crocodile, alligator, and snakeskin. Adding to this collection of motorcycle and biker jackets with heavy embossing and stitch details, multiple pockets, logos, and tattoos in single and double-breasted styles will make you feel like a complete fashion hunk. Leather jackets have distinctive collar styles, button or zipper closure details, and some elegant stitch finishes and ornamental hardware details. The number of button closures can vary from style to style. Also, zipper closures, cuff zip closures, and length greatly affect the type of leather jacket you wear. Your jacket can be either hip length or waist length. It can be in the form of a trench coat or a collarless jacket for that very casual look. Leather jackets should be crispy in a notch collar front with a button-up closure. With many zipper pockets, racer jackets look chic. This is one of my favorite jackets that I have in my closet. This is classified as one of their biker jackets. You have the, the smooth leather, that joint feel like butter. I think that's what they call it at All Saints, butter leather. Feel like While flap pockets give a leather jacket a formal feel, black and brown are the hot colors for leather jackets this season with different shades in each. The Global Leather Goods Market Report provides statistics on market share, recent developments, and the impact of domestic and localized market players, as well as opportunities in terms of emerging revenue pockets, changes in market laws, product approvals, strategic decisions, product launches, geographic expansions, and technological advancements. In the forecast period of 2023 to 2030, the global leather goods industry is expected to grow significantly. According to data bridge market research, the market is expected to grow at a cager of 6.7% from 2023 to 2030 and reach USD 699,906.77 million by 2030. The rising demand for fashionable fancy leather apparel, boots and accessories is a major factor in the market's development. In addition, the increasing demand for premium and high quality luxury leather products and the low cost heavy duty construction of synthetic leather products is expected to accelerate market development.